Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to take on the biggest of the Penn uh, SS line. Uh, this one was sent in by Nick. Nick is uh, a good customer of, of mine, and you've seen some videos on the, um, the reels that he has sent in to me before. This one is the Penn 9500 SS. It's the black and gold series. It's the uh, uh, largest of the saltwater reels. This one is... Uh, well, for lack of a better term, we'll call it the Annie reel uh, from Annie. It's had a hard knock life, right? Uh, it's just, uh, it's lost all its paint here. I'm not sure who the seller uh, was and how Nick got it and all that other stuff. This one has been scrubbed. So it looks like the paint has been removed either by somebody uh, sandpapering it or getting some kind of aggressive cleaner with it. The reel turns, but boy, you can see it. <laughs> it's a struggle, right? Uh, and uh, another indication that this thing was probably sitting in a pole on a uh, boat for a while, probably not being used. Uh, that's probably why we have the corrosion and the paint loss there. Uh, these screws were very tight, so I got a head start on them. I did uh, spray them down with a penetrating oil. <clears throat> in this case, I used uh, WD-40 as the penetrating oil. Those of you that watch the channel know that I really don't care or have a preference for what oil it is. But uh, in this case, we were using that as a, um, a uh, loosening agent to get some of that um, corrosion off of there so that we could get these out. I always like to start these by removing the non-side uh, plate uh, stuff, the non-handle side, just to check. Sometimes these older reels have a screw in here holding the handle down. Sometimes they don't. But uh, before you go yanking on uh, the one side of the handle, Make sure that there is no, uh, no screw holding it from the other side. All right, we also want to take all of our parts off. We can start with the handle by turning that in a, a clockwise or away from you direction. And as I remove the exterior pieces, I like to thank our first responders and essential personnel and everybody keeping us safe during the, uh, the pandemic. I won't get tired of saying it, but they get very tired of trying to deal day in and day out with the cases and the issues that come up. And... Um, to them uh, and to their credit, thank you for all that you do. First responders include, of course, all the uniformed services, fire, police, rescue, EMT, uh, as well as all of the hospital staffs, doctor offices staffs, and of course the folks that are keeping our trains and transit running and our um, uh, food delivery services and the like. Thank you for all you do. This is a little bit of a, uh, a question mark to me. That looks like a brand new spool or close to it. It doesn't show any of the evidence of it being uh, uh, sitting on a boat taking salt spray or anything like that, but surely the rest of the reel does. So I'm not sure if Nick replaced that or not, but that's okay. We'll put that in for now. I'm using the bottom of a jug to hold all of my pieces and parts from the reel, and uh, we'll just go ahead and get finished with this. These screws were very, very tight. In fact, I didn't have the hand strength to do this. And I do know from time to time we have a conversation about using mechanical screwdrivers as opposed to hand to hand. And I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that. But when it comes to stuck screws that you can't move, well, I have a, uh, uh, a hammer. I guess it would be a hammer drill, I guess, in a hand sense. It's uh, much like the mechanical screwdrivers, but it has that rat-tat-tat to it as you push down. I found the blade that was identical to the slot on the screw, and I used that to break the, uh, the screw's hold in the uh, case. And I only do that when I just can't do it uh, by the strength of my hand. I do also prefer or recommend that if you do this kind of thing, I only suggest that you do it on the outbound side and not the inbound side. Don't use a, a drill to put these back in, unless, of course, you don't have the hand strength. And if you don't have the hand strength, leave it proud through the last turn or two by hand. Because these were sticking, I wanted to make sure that I got them oiled up and that anything that's on those screw threads uh, gets cleaned up as a result. All right, let's find out why this thing is turning the way it's turning. Hey, Nick! Look at that, huh? Holy cow, this may get the award for the absolute worst in terms of a sanded reel. Uh, this one may have been pulled up from the bottom of the ocean, 
and uh, we'll do our best, but I'll tell you what, that is just incredible. For those of you that can't see, how about a close-up of that? Wow, just uh, amazing, absolutely amazing. This one's gonna take a little bit. Now, let's just get started. First, I guess we can find out what we can just plain knock off of there. You notice that I did take a paper towel. I don't want that stuff infiltrating the other projects on my desk, so I'm just going to kind of pick at it. Wow. Wow. Talk about being sanded. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm trying to give this one a second chance. The, the surprising thing is these reels are so strong that uh, you can actually kind of get them working again. And the good news is, is there's some parts availability. So if something is kind of rotted away here, we uh, will have a chance to, to make that happen. My fear is that the bearing up top there may be stuck. And if it's stuck, I'm not quite sure what we're going to be able to do with that. We'll just uh, kind of pick some of that stuff off, and we're going to hit that with some penetrating oil. Try to do the best we can here in the cleanup job. Well, you don't need to, to watch me do the laundry on all of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just pick at this for a while. We can see that the parts are moving. That's kind of amazing in and of itself. The uh, main gear is out. That's why you're not sliding on the, um, the other side of this. Let's kind of get that stuff off. I want to get as much of that out of my off my bench as I can, as quickly as I can. And then we'll turn the video off. I'll go do some cleaner. This is a good candidate to put in an ultrasonic cleaner. Not because it's going to get rid of all of that stuff, but it will shake free a lot of this stuff. And uh, there's nothing really in here can't be injured beyond what's, uh, what's happened here already. I'm also going to spray that uh, tie-down block on our axle shaft. Hopefully we can free that up to get the axle shaft out of there. We'll go give this an ultrasonic bath and we'll come back. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we, uh, we did a good soak on this. We did an awful lot of elbow grease and scrubbing as well as the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I think we've got all of the, uh, the sand out of it. Uh, lots of scrubbing, lots of uh, wire brushing, picking, all kinds of things, but the gears are in good condition. And uh, this one's going to go fishing again, I'm sure. Now, I did talk to Nick. I did have an opportunity to exchange some emails with him and uh, find out where and what he got it for. Well, he didn't pay that much for it, so I guess even if it fails, he can recover that in terms of parts. This is the only one I'm a little bit concerned with. The metal is not the brasses or the other things that this was made out of. There seems to be a little bit of a rut here. I think we're going to get uh, going to be okay with that, but uh, we, we will see. That's the crosswind block. The, um, the burrings are in good condition. I think they were replaced at some point in life. And it's time to just go put this thing back together and see if we can't make it work. <clears throat> so lots of grease, of course. I'm going to want to use that. I'm using pen precision real grease. And uh, we're going to start by just kind of putting some grease around where the oscillation gear or the crosswind gear is going to go. And then we'll load that up. You get grease on all sides of this re uh, piece because it interacts with everything. It interacts gear-wise with the back of the main gear. It, uh, uh, it pushes the front for the crosswind block and the back runs along that piece in the case that you just saw me putting some grease on there. Since we did use the ultrasonic cleaner and some oil degreasers and the like, you want to make sure that you, you really do load up on the, uh, on the grease when you go to reinstall this. Okay, this is the gear from the back of the main gear that's uh, going to drive that crosswind gear. We have a um, couple of bearings. Bearings, I believe, have been replaced. They're shielded. One of them is, uh, appears, appears to be sealed. This one, the two on the side are sealed, uh, shielded, and they're working, surprisingly. Uh, so I don't think they've been infiltrated with the sand. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold that, put that bearing back on this side. Make sure that that gets pushed in nicely. And I'm going to oil it from this side. 
So this reel in the end may or may not be up to snuff as far as a pen reel is concerned uh, of this ilk, but it will be uh, will be out and about fishing. Okay, we've done that piece. I'm going to take the, the pinion gear then. I'm going to do the same thing here, kind of lather that up. The gears do not appear to be damaged. I think what probably happened with this reel is it got dunked. The performance degraded right away with all of that sand and, and the like in there and it just went into a shelf. Nick tells me he uh, picked it up at a garage sale. So what he paid for it is probably worth whatever the salvageable parts are on this if it, uh, it sold as a parts reel. And this one appears to be a sealed bearing. And if that's the case, then uh, it shouldn't have any damage at all. I've tested them. They all seem to be working fine. We're going to go ahead and put that on top. I'm going to put a light coating of grease around the rim just for the next guy who comes to take it out. It will facilitate easing it into the case there. All right, and then what we want to do is we want to take the anti-reverse cogs and, and get those back in place. There's a couple of things here that you'll recall. We have that collar. And we have the three tie-down screws associated with that collar. This is where that parts tray helps. Because you can easily find them. <clears throat> Remember the uh, orientation of this? There's two that go below, one that goes above. So let's get those in here. This is where pictures always help. Because if you get lost along the way, then uh, you can always refer back to your pictures to, to check on the location of the screws, the orientation of things like springs and anti-reverse dogs and the like, and uh, just generally what came off first and what came off later in terms of the order of disassembly. All right, I'm going to get that first one in there, but I'm not going to tie it down completely because if I do, I mean lose the alignment on this side. And these are small pieces. Those of you that watch my channel know I struggle a little bit with the small screws. I accept that. You need patience. That's number one in the rule of uh, repairing fishing reels. Let's get this last one in here. Looks like we need to Move that anti-reverse dog out of the way. I was able to restore the post and tripping for that uh, anti-reverse override. That's uh, something that I thought we wouldn't be able to do with all of the salt and, and the like in here. We were able to do that, so that's fantastic. I didn't show that on camera, but we can now move this and, and get the override proper. Okay, there's uh, one more anti-reverse there that goes with this, but before we do that we have a collar here. Collar goes on. And this has to be centered. There's a, a clip that eventually is going to ride like that, so you kind of have to center that, but before you center that, you need this anti-reverse dog to be set up. And I noticed that we have a stripped out case and somebody did a bush fix on it, putting in a, uh, a heavy screw and a spring set to kind of hold it in place. And unfortunately, that's about the best we're going to do uh, with that piece. All right, we're going to set it up this way. I'm going to bring it in and we're going to hope that it holds the second time through. That's unfortunate, but when you get to reels this age, Sometimes you just have to go with what you got. So we'll put it in, we'll test it, we'll make sure that it works. And it does. So we'll be, we'll be okay with the anti-reverse function here. Center this because you're going to have to mesh your rotor assembly with that piece. 
it's usually best done without that key in the way. There you go. And you'll know if you're centered or not, if you're fully extended down below here with coverage, and if you have room for the, the nut, which we do. We're going to grab that nut next. That ultrasonic cleaner did a nice job underneath it. Didn't didn't solve everything, but it solved a lot of it. It loosened it up, and in loosening it up, it enabled me to come back in with the the pick and to um, use the degreasers and add a little bit more to get it all cleaned up inside. All right, just going to tighten that down. I'm going to give it a spin now. This is what I was saying, that bearing is in good condition. You're not hearing any any complaints from it. Next up then is the main gear. I'm concerned with the bearing on the one side and uh, we may need at some point in the future to, uh, to do some work with that one, but I, I think we're going to be fine. I was spinning it. I think it was just dry and we'll uh, We've been soaking it in the oil there. I think that's going to take care of the dryness of it. Again, because we put this in the ultrasonic cleaner and we took all of the greases off of it, you want to be liberal in your use of the grease. Normally, I'll tell you, uh, you don't need to get it in every tooth. Uh, you know, it's going to spread as it goes around. In this case, I think uh, the closer you get to covering the gear with grease, the better you're going to be. Yes, yeah, centrifugal force is going to push the grease to the inside and uh, it'll be useless there, but uh, I think you want to kind of over medicate the situation, if you will. All right, last part then is the back of this cross line block that goes in before the main gear. This is the one that I think if, if there's going to be a problem with this reel, it may just be that there's a catch, a little bit of a catch in that belly there. We'll find out. Okay, that goes in next. Slide that under your anti-reverse override bar. I want to put a little bit of grease into that cup holder below, which is where the axle is going to, to land. I'll take our gear next. Get that in. I want to get a little bit of grease onto the, the gear itself. All right. Grab our axle shaft. Make sure that that gets cleaned off. I spent a lot of time on a case. I didn't spend a lot of time on these internal pieces. That's why you see me Wiping it down a little bit more now, but that's okay. I'm going to use some steel wool to just kind of feel through it to make sure that we don't have any pitting going on or anything that was the result of that. And then a light coating of grease here. Most of that's going to rub off, so I'm just going to kind of get ahead of myself and just lightly take some of that off anyway. It'll rub off in here as it goes through. You want to take that flat side and point it out. And then align the flat side with the cross line block like this. Next up is our little flat tie down. And again, that's a, another reason why the parts tray comes into play because as you get the smaller pieces of parts that belong in this reel, it gets uh, a little bit more difficult to find them if you have them laying out on your table. Right, there's two small screws for that in the box. And I apologize if you're seeing my arm, but Kind of where I lay the box. Right, put those in. So I, I would challenge most reels by today's standards to to try and meet the durability. If if one of those newer reels today got sanded like this one did, I think we probably would open it up, and close it right back up, and. Uh, would just go on to the parts pile somewhere because I don't believe that the, the modern gearing that can withstand uh, what's gone on in this reel, but I'm, I'm hopeful with this reel. I think this reel has got a good chance of doing uh, good things in the future for Nick, and if not, like I said, he's got parts. These have been oiled, the bearings. Put that plate back on. A lot of scrub or UV damage or something went on with this. I don't know what it is. Uh, but fish won't know what it is either. They don't really care what's on the other side reeling them in. They just care to get off the line. And uh, 
this one still uh, it has a patina to it I guess that's a good way to put it right it has a nice patina to it now which kind of shows the years of use we had to clean all those screws up they were stuck in a case and we oiled them in addition to cleaning them and uh, they're going in a whole lot easier they still have a little bit of oil on them if uh, you wanted to and you didn't oil them earlier you could have put a drop of oil in where they're threading in that would uh, certainly make it easier and they'll stop it from uh, kind of rusting into the case or seizing in the case these are stainless steel screws they're not going to rust but they would seize in the case from the dirt and the grit and the grime and salt and everything else that goes on with these reels i'm uh, anxious to find out how this is going to go i uh, i am very hopeful that uh, this, despite all of that stuff that we saw early on there that uh, this will be able to go fishing again and uh, we're going to see in a minute or two or three. I just switched over to a, a screwdriver that has a, a wider tip because the screws have a wider gap than, uh, than some of the others that I use those smaller screwdrivers on. And then when you just get down to the case, you probably have to go back because this one has an inset in it. All right, those are on. I'm going to go put the ring down on this side. I should have paid attention uh, which side was which in terms of the uh, gearing. This does not have the felt that would normally hold the oil to it. Just a note. So some water will get in there eventually. And uh, it's just going to be the way it is. All right, we'll keep in suspense for a moment here. We're going to go over. This looks like a brand new spool, so I don't know what's going on with this reel, quite honestly, in terms of what got dunked. Maybe somebody tried to pretty this up for sale. Probably not, because what Nick told me he paid for it is probably the cost of the spool, so I can't imagine somebody would throw a spool on with that value and then uh, just ask what uh, the basics was. So we will find out. Okay, so we have a Teflon washer and a, and a hold down washer, that's fine. Just wanted to check that before we, uh, we went any further. back on and then we'll see what goes whether we were successful or not I have no doubt the reel will turn and I have no doubt that it will uh, be able to go fishing the question is will it uh, be restored to its former glory or just a shadow of itself Hold Okay, we have a bent bale that's low. That's what's clipping here. Let's just move that up for a moment. That's actually really smooth. I'm quite surprised. Listen to that. Wow. Credit to Penn. All right, so a lot of you are going to ask, how do we fix that bent bale? Well, it's easy enough. It's a bent bale wire. It just bends up. This has got what I call the hammer bale. It's going to come around here and hit in order to trip. So it'll come around here, it'll whack that post, and it'll push it up and over. And this one, because it is bent, it's not flipping very easily. And the way to fix that is to come over here, remove the bail wire. Okay, you can see why, why you're having such a hard time. That should be aligned with the carrier. We've got an inch space which says that this has been terribly bent. It may have had something to do with when it crashed into the, the sea or what have you. We're just going to try and work it back manually. It's only wire. See how we do. That's much better. We'll see what happens when we bring this back in. There you go. It's as simple as that, right? So we did two things with that bending. I moved it up so that it doesn't hit the handle. And I moved it in to take the tension off the side posts so that it collapses easily. So that's it. 
Wow, Nick, you got lucky. It's your lucky day. All right, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please like it. If you uh, have any questions on this reel or any other reels, uh, please leave them in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you and answer your questions for you. And uh, finally, if you have a reel that needs to be repaired, well, I do them just like I'm doing for Nick here. I do them by mail, and I will be happy to uh, provide you with that reel repair information. So, as always, thank you to our first responders, and uh, please, everybody, stay well, stay healthy, stay vigilant about this uh, pandemic, and uh, stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.